And if we remember death often as the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to do, there are three things that it will do for us. The first and foremost is that it will make our relationship with our Creator, our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will make it better. Why? Because when someone is remembering death, not in a depressing way, but in a motivating way, when someone remembers that at one time, all of this will go, all of this will end. كل من عليها فان Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, everything will be gone, destroyed. When someone remembers this, they remember what? That Allah says, everything will be destroyed except for Himself, except for His face, except for Allah. So when someone lives life knowing that everything is going to be gone, I'm going to work for the permanent. I'm going to work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we know that my life is not guaranteed. I might walk out of this masjid today and get in the car, may Allah protect us all. And something might happen to me. And I might pass away. Did I give this khutbah for the right reasons? Did I come to Irvine for the right reasons? Was I sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the whole point. That's the whole purpose. And so each and every one of us, when we think about death, we think about, am I doing it for Allah? Am I working for Allah? Am I taking care of my family in the right way for Allah? Am I going to school and getting good grades for Allah? Am I treating my wife and my parents and my kids, am I treating them well for Allah? Because at the end, Allah is all that matters. At the end of it all, it doesn't matter whether or not you drive a Mercedes or a BMW or an Audi. It doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't matter. Wallahi, I drive a Honda Civic. Trust me, it does not matter. What matters is, did you do it for Allah? Did you drive that Audi to the masjid for Allah? Did you take that Mercedes and pack it up with things and donate it to charity for Allah? Or was it all just for other people's sake? So the first way that remembering death will better your life now is by remembering Allah. The second is that it will force you, if someone really truly believes that at any moment they could die, it will force you to become a better person with other people. You won't feel comfortable, and I won't feel comfortable treating people badly. Because I know that, subhanAllah, this might be the last time that I ever inter interact with you. So if we live life remembering death, we'll never ever feel comfortable having a bad relationship or a bad conversation with someone. And the last way in which death will make our life better, remembering death will make our life better, is that it will make us people who do ihsan. Ihsan means trying your best 110%. Giving everything you've got. That's ihsan. Ihsan means doing everything you can to reach the goal of success for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if someone remembers death, they're not going to feel satisfied with second place. They're not going to feel satisfied with mediocrity. We're not satisfied as Muslims with mediocrity. We want the best. Anything you're doing, whatever you do, be the best at it. If you're a student in school, be the best. If you're a parent, you have kids, be the best parent. Don't feel satisfied with not being the best parent with your kid. If you're a child, be the best child. Don't feel satisfied with your parents saying, yeah, he was good, there were some things that he lacked on. Try your best. And yes, we will hit bumps in the road, we will hit obstacles, but always bounce back from them, inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who remember death. And not in a way that paralyzes us, not in a way that deflates us, but in a way that makes us realize and motivates us Toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is inna ja'alnakum ummatan wasata that He made us a nation that is balanced, that is moderate, that is in the middle path. And so I think it's very important to discuss that when we remember death as human beings, as people who know that we're gonna die, the inevitable. We remember it in between two extremes. We don't become depressed and we're not like happy go lucky, like cultish about death. But we're in the middle. We realize that it's real, it's gonna happen, but we work hard for it. One practical tip, besides the three that I've given in the previous khutbah, if you have parents, even if they've passed away, this is the moment where we realize that we have to treat our parents the best we can. And as someone who moved away from his parents two years ago, young people, I can tell you, when I was living with my parents in Chicago, I had nothing more that I wanted than to move out and get my own place. I could not wait. The first night that I got to my place in Dallas, because I lived in Dallas for a year, the first night that I was there, I was a big man, had my own place, had my own car. I could go anywhere, could do anything, no curfew. I was on the living room floor of my living room. I was crying like a baby, saying that I miss my mom. And this is coming from a six foot three, 260 pound Kevin Love lookalike, right? I missed my mommy. I call her on the phone and I'm crying. She's crying too, because I missed her. And you know what? I still miss my parents. I miss my dad, I miss my mom, I miss my family, I miss my brothers, my sisters. I miss them. And it's part of life. Sometimes you have to move away. Sometimes you have to do what you got to do. But it's important to always treat your parents the best because you never know when you're going to have to move away. And even more serious, you never know when they're going to have to leave you or you might leave them forever. And if any of us have lost our parents, you know more than I know what I'm saying to you. And so today is the day that we decide, no matter what level we're at, to treat our parents better. No matter where your parents are, call them, text them. If you see them in person, give them a hug. Call your parents, tell them that you love them. If your parents have passed and are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua and give salika on their behalf. That's a way that you tell them that you love them, even though they're not here anymore.